Amen. <laughs> All right, everybody. Good morning. Good morning and welcome. It's wonderful to look around the room here. I just thought to myself, you know, we're having an entire summer of talking about setting the table. How do we not have at least one table service, right? I mean, this, is, this is what we do as a church every once in a while to gather together, to look across and see one another at tables. And uh, this morning we are going to keep going with the next section and so it is an all-together service, so only the littles are heading downstairs, so let me pray for them now. Lord, thank you for these little ones. Thank you for the, all the generation that is here right now. Lord, let us learn from you and your word. Be with us, and may our presence, may our gathering glorify you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So little ones, you can head downstairs. For everybody else, there are a number of handouts on your tables. Now, some of them are activities to be able to be done. They're all connected today to what we're going to be talking about. And some of them are going to be even the studies that we're doing as we're talking through the all-together table. So, the last month, we've been talking about the message of the table. And this month, we're going to be talking about the method of the table. So, a little more method and how. Okay, that, that we're going to be talking about. We're going to start today in John 1.14. So you can open up your Bibles. And if you have Bibles, you can have them out on the table as we're going to be doing. Oh, here comes the food. Look at that. Here comes the food. Amen. Uh, I think I might need a couple other helpers. Looks like, can I get three more people to go help out? We've got 19 tables to set up here. So here we go. So this is a nice spread as we fellowship together. It's always good to kind of break down tradition a little bit and understand you know, when the church first started, the supper that they had together, the communion was a meal together. It wasn't something formal that they, they, they had up front. It was a meal that they ate together. So we are going to do that today during this service as well. This is our communion together to remember him. So John 1.14. John 1.14, do you have that up there? The word became flesh and dwelt among us. We observed his glory, the glory as the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. We're talking method this month. That Jesus dwells with us. Our message is the good news of the kingdom, served with love in plain language, with an attitude of humility to better highlight God's generosity. So now we look at the how. Last month, there's one of your pages that are on the table are a bunch of quotes from last month. That love is the fulfillment of the law. That there's a basket with your name on it. That Jesus is the bread of life. Our humility allows others to share in God's generosity. God does not show favoritism. And now we come here to John saying this, that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So, in order to really get a, a handle on this verse, we need to know the context. So we are going to do a little study at your tables, okay, and at home, it's up on the, it'll be up on the screen as well, yep, there it is, all these keywords. I want you to look through this passage from 1 through 14 in the, in the book of John, and you're going to look for these key words and write some highlights down, okay? What does this mean in under, uh, to help us understand verse 14. Are you ready? Go. Talk out loud. Talk at your tables. Let people pipe up and say, what do you see?
Nope. Yep, two. Check, 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 yep. Check, 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 yep. All right, about three more minutes. Three more minutes. One minute, one minute. Be sure you have something for each of those keywords. All right, are we ready? No. <laughs> 10 seconds. All right, all right. This is always good for us to practice. You know, in summer, all of our uh, rhythms are different, and there's a lot of goodness that comes with a different rhythm to summer. But one of them is it, it is it is difficult to always continue small groups and Bible study groups over the summer because of people traveling and going back and forth. And so it's good to, to have one of these together. I wish you guys could see what I see. There are certain times of year that I really treasure being up here. And one of them is on Christmas Eve when we sing Silent Night and Megan is beaming over there right now. I just saw her. She was taking a bite of a donut and her whole body went backward with a huge smile on her face. As we sing Silent Night and we light the candles across the congregation and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's one of, it's one of my favorite things. But right now it was wonderful to see the family of God huddled around the word of God talking, and as, as you started, I don't know if you know this, how quiet everyone was when they started. But as you just settled into it, it got a little bit louder and a little bit, it wasn't boisterous, you guys aren't up walking around like you do before the service, but it was, it was nice to see that release. All right, so let's go through it. What did, what did you get for, I need a helper up here to be a runner for this microphone. It's, all right, all right. All right. Which table wants to go? Which table thinks they have a good one for God? I will just pick on you. Oh. Someone. There we go. There we go. Okay. Thanks. Um, your savior and protector. Savior, protector. Absolutely. Did we notice for, for God, in the, right here it says, in the beginning, right? Same three words that start the entire scriptures, right? In the beginning, all right? 
Are you guys going to go for God or the next one? God, yeah. We'll go God still. Okay, go God. I just really wanted to make him run all the way across the room. That's all right. And I like to say go God, so go for it. Yes. (laughs) He did not run. Um, But yeah, just it starts off, God is the central point of the whole thing. That's right. That's right. God is the central point of the whole thing. Very good. Okay, how about the word? The word. What do you guys have for the word? Let's go with this table over here. What did you guys have for the word? <laughs> uh, well, the, the word is something that's very re- related to God. It comes from God. And the word was God. So it's like a different way of describing or thinking about the previous keyword. Absolutely. So Savior, Provider, central point of everything. And now a new way of thinking about God as the Word. This word in Greek is logos. That's how you say it in English. It means the divine expression of truth. It was a word very well known in philosophy around, around the, the Greek empire. Logos, right? That was everybody was desiring that. Let's seek the divine expression of truth. And here it says, this is a new way of seeing God. Go ahead, Bob. Just the word is alive. It's Absolutely. a living, moving thing. It impacts our life and you know, the world. Absolutely. So the word is alive, impacts our lives. And, and you see it's it is uh, given dimensions throughout even just these first 14 verses. All right, let's move on to uh, light. Light, back there. Sorry. Um, I just uh, was really struck by the, how it's talked about as John is not the light. He shares the light. He brings the light or he brings the light. Because I think so often we kind of get a little full of ourselves and think that we're so great, but really we're here to share how great he is. Amen, amen, amen. We're here to share how great he is. Did you notice the switch here and the word, it says, in him. The word is personal now. In him was life, right? In him was life, and that life was the light of men. All right, so we have a personal, the word, do you see that? Everybody see that up there? Okay, so let me, let me see. So if this light is the light so bright, it's the light of all men. Can I get, give me a, a, a couple kids up here for a second. Anybody wants to come? Give me a couple kids. So I said things about being up here and seeing everybody out there, right? Now, one thing you might not notice is there are a lot of lights on you up here. Do you notice that? Okay. Can you find the brightest light? Uh, definitely, that one. definitely that one. Okay. Anybody have a different opinion? The window. That's a good one. Yes. Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Uh, that's very good. Okay. But that, that actually wasn't the point, but that's absolutely right. Okay. These are really bright too, aren't they? They, exa- they? It is hard. It is really difficult to look straight into them. I have. So can you imagine? <laughs> Excellent. Can you imagine, right, a light that shines for all mankind and how bright that would be? The closest thing we have is the sun, right? The closest thing we have. But God created the sun. It's in the beginning, right? Everything was created through him. So his light is even brighter than that. How can we see him? How can we know him if his light is so bright? Even these are difficult to look into. Yeah. Okay. All right. You guys can sit down. Good job. Good job. So now we come to, having that question in mind, we come to flesh. Who's got something for flesh, the word flesh? Over here. Hold on one second. Let's get in the microphone. (laughs) Living creature. Living creature. All right. So this light, just, just in case we have a personal hymn, and we have life, and we have light, and this light is the light of all men, okay? And now we have it took on flesh, became a living creature that we could know. Anybody else have something for flesh? Yes, right, right in, yep. in front of my yep. face. Jesus? G- Jesus, right? 
can, can you guys all look at these 1 through 14? Now, it's difficult because a lot of us come already knowing this. But if you just read these 14 verses, especially with John pointing to him, the word him, all of these different things, it's really difficult actually to see anybody but Jesus. Amen? Just from these 14 verses, they're, they're remarkable. So this took on flesh, there's another word for it, it's incarnate, to take on flesh, to become flesh, okay, to, be, to take on incarnation, okay, this incarnation so we could see him, but then it says not only did he take on flesh, it says and dwell or dwelt. Anybody have something for dwell or dwelt? Right back here. Dwell simply means to live, and so you can extrapolate. That means Jesus lived with us. The man lived like us. He had to eat. He had to clean himself. All the other annoying things and the fantastic things about simply living. Amen. Amen. He dwelt among us. This word in the Greek is actually tabernacle. He tabernacled among us, which for all of those people who are Old Testament scholars brings you all the way back to the design of God given to the people in the wilderness so that they would have the presence of God among them. And then again with the temple, again, the design of God from heaven given to the people to have the temple so that the presence of God would be among them. And now we have John saying that the light took on flesh and tabernacled among us. Among us. That's good news. <laughs> Amen? That's good news. This is part of the message that we're talking Good news, the king has come. The light of all men. There's a big part of this light. Did you catch that the darkness cannot overcome it? Did you catch that? The darkness cannot overcome it. And when I read that this week, I just felt these two words just brew up within me and bring me such joy. And I just <laughs> lighten up. Lighten up. We all have trials and tribulations that we are going through. There are many that I'm counseling right now, facing the busyness of life and all sorts of dark shadows, and not just shadows, really dark things happening. Lighten up doesn't mean to take them lightly. Lighten up means get with Jesus. When we are in the presence of the living God, even those dark things take on a different shape, a different color, because light dispels darkness. It, darkness can't overcome it. That he came here and dwelt among us. How did he dwell? Now we're getting to it. We're getting to our transition to this month. How did he dwell? Not just that he came, but how did he dwell among us? Well, let me show you this. We're talking about practicing biblical spirituality. So how did he dwell? Can you go forward one? All of these passages here, and it's not even a complete list, I just took some from each of the Gospels, are all passages where Jesus eats with people. Where Jesus is at a table with people. How did he dwell among us? Around the table. Personal, communal, wonderful, opportunities for ministry. All of these passages have that in it. And I said it's not enough. I'm going to point to three. This is the good news incarnate. The good news incarnate. How did he dwell among us? Yes, he was born. Yes, he was baptized. He fulfilled the law. He fulfilled the prophets. And then he went about ministry around the table. Table ministry from Jesus to the early church. We'll, we're going to see that. But let me point out three tables. Three tables, okay? Three kinds of table. Table one, love God. Mark 14, 22 to 26 is the part of Mark. You can open up your Bibles and look. I'm going to tell the story of each of these tables. This is the Last Supper. Now, that, again, can have a traditional understanding in your mind. The Last Supper, it means a certain thing at a certain time, okay? But think of it. The Last Supper means that there were many other suppers before. Amen? There were many other suppers before. Jesus had been training his disciples on what it looks like to be the community of faith. 
to have Jesus participate with them, to tabernacle among them around these tables. And at this table, he gives them the new covenant and lays it out for them. This new covenant is based on me. This new covenant is through the work that I will do. Share this cup and this bread. Every time you gather, remember me until I come again. I'm not going to drink of this. This new covenant is given. Love God table. This is what we do when we worship. Not all churches take communion every Sunday, and that's fine. We do. We take it every Sunday because it says when you gather, take communion together. Do the Last Supper together. As they were eating, he's laying out the new covenant. Incredible words that they don't come close to understanding at this point. But what I want to say here is not only do when we, this table for loving God, there's, another, there's a ship that you could call it. Let's get on the worship, right? <laughs> Let's get on the worship. The good, the good ship lollipop, right? Ship. Let's get on the ship. The worship. Worship is where we love God. It's where we gather together. We're broken into individual tables here, but usually we're in rows so that we can sit at one table worshiping our Lord who is not on the cross anymore. Amen? We worship our Lord, and we have tables up front to show that we gather around one table in one name, and it's a good table to have regularly so that we remember our salvation is not on our works but by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? Table one, love God. Table one, love God. Now here's the cool thing. All of these tables are also discipleship tables. Okay? How do we discipleship? How do we disciple when we love God at the table of the Sunday service? We disciple generationally. Because we worship in spirit and truth. We worship with our kids. We worship in the light. And we worship in spirit and truth. Amen? We worship with our kids. We just had an awesome time with our kids this week at Bible Day Camp. At Bible Day Camp. I want them to show you something. Anybody who's ready, can I get any of the kids who want to do the verse? The scripture verse. I want you guys to show everybody. Okay, we've got a couple. We've got a couple. I need some leaders up here too. Come on. All right, there's, there's a couple. There's a couple. Okay, now church, notice this. I'm the oldest person on stage. You, la you laugh. This Bible day camp was phenomenal with these young people taking the lead. They were awesome. They were absolutely awesome. All right, guys, can you come right down here, right in front? I left a nice little space for you. Are you right? Now, they're going to do some different actions because each group came up with their own actions. But are you ready to hear this? Let's talk about love God. Are you ready? Can you guys do it? Yep. All right. You're all on your own. You start it. Romans. 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 Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, let chorus start it. Ready? Romans. That's just a little taste. You're going to hear a little bit more about it next week. But it was a phenomenal time, a wonderful table to love God. And it was a mission trip. This was a mission trip for us. This is a mission team, everybody who participated. Can I just ask that real quick? Everybody who participated, whether you set, set up or anything, can you stand, church? Everybody who was a teacher, leaders, set up. Awesome, 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 awesome. Unfortunately, you got that one wrong. We are one of the few churches who offer a completely free Bible Day camp. We do that because of the faithfulness of the tithe. So everybody who is a tithing member of this church, can you stand up? Because you were part of the mission stream for VBS, for Bible Day camp. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. So that's table number one. Table number two, love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. In Luke 19, 1 through 9, Jesus is walking through Jericho with this huge crowd, and he meets a man named Zacchaeus. Anybody know the story of Zacchaeus? You do? You do? Ezra, come on up here. Where, do you have the microphone still? Can you tell the story of Zacchaeus? Um, Zacchaeus was trying to see Jesus, but there was a huge crowd, so he couldn't. And then, uh, and then eventually Jesus came to the tree and told Zacchaeus to come down because he was going to his house for dinner. Awesome. Awesome. Perfect. Well done, Ezra. We learned that on day one of Bible Day Camp. Now you notice, Jesus is out there, he's got a huge crowd following, and the crowd was not happy. They said, how can this man go and eat at a table with sinners? Go to the house of a sinner. Zacchaeus was the chief tax collector, a thief, a robber of all of everybody who was surrounding Jesus. And Jesus knew his name, called him out and said, come down from that tree. He went up in the tree just so he could see Jesus. And Jesus said, come down from that tree. I'm having, I, he says, I need to. <laughs> it's necessary that I come to your house for dinner tonight. Is that awesome? I love how many times Jesus invites himself into people's houses, by the way. You all giggle. But, you know, we're in the Midwest, and there's also just a cultural thing. Sometimes we need to be a little more nosy than nice. It's true. Not everybody will open up at the hurt that they're going through. Not everybody will allow you into their life. And sometimes we can do that through friendship. This is, this is to love your neighbor is to hop on the ship. Friendship. To go to go. Jesus knew his name. He knew his past. He knew what the crowd said of him, but he selected him as a divine opportunity to show the generosity of God. Who are those in your life who feel like outsiders? Go to them. Go to them. Open up the table to love your neighbor. And table number three, love one another. Love one another. From house to house, this is fellowship. This is fellowship. We're called to do this. It's interesting that in actually John's gospel, when he's at the Last Supper, this is where Jesus gives the new command to love one another in the context of eating together, of the Last Supper. Love one another as I have loved you. And in John 20, 24 to 29, that's when the resurrected Christ, having appeared multiple times already, appears so that Thomas can touch his wounds. What an incredible act. He says that they were gathered inside. By the way, Jesus doesn't need to knock down walls. He walks through them. Okay? It says that Jesus was in the room with them. He wasn't there, then he was. He walked into the room in, in, inside and he showed Thomas his wounds. The resurrected Christ still has the wounds. That's who he is. He's pierced for our transgressions. And when we love one another, we build each other up. Sometimes we need to see the wounds. And we can gather around. We could kick that person out for weak faith. Or we could say, I am with you. Let's study together. Let's look at the Word. Let's talk about your life, what God has already done in your life. Let's talk about what God has done in history. Let's build each other up, church. Romans 14, 19 talks about seek what brings peace, not what divides and Paul is specifically saying that to the church, to two groups. One thought they were stronger in faith than the other one. One thought, we're doing Christianity better than you are. And Paul is specifically saying this, seek what brings peace. Because the saddest thing that the world can see is us fighting each other. Because if we're fighting each other, then guess what? That denies the reality of the gospel. That it's what you do, what you think, and not what he has accomplished. Discipleship happens here. Discipleships, as we, we build one another, we meet one another's felt needs. Yesterday, an awesome group of guys went and moved the Porras family. It was, it was so great. It was so great to move with you guys. Who was there? Who was there when that moving crew? Look at this. Look at this. Even though it was there, guys. Look at, the, look at this. 
And there was an awesome representation of the younger generation there as well. Ah, oh, it was so great. It was so great to let them take the heavy stuff. <laughs> Although a couple of people said, they're like, oh, Josh, you're strong. I'm like, what? What do you, th what? what am I? Like, okay, okay yeah, all right, I'll, I'll go. Moving houses, blessing one another, building one another up, encouraging one another, being there for one another. Love one another as I have loved you, is what Jesus said. So the first table is love God. Second table is love your neighbor. Third table is love one another. Three easy tables. So I ask you, how's your tabernacling life? These three tables we need regularly. We need them. We need them, not only because they're good for us, but because those are the three commands of the new covenant. Love God, love one another, love your neighbor. Those three tables are good. They're good. And they're simple, they're practical. You can do it. Three tables. Can everybody do that? Love God. You got it? Love God, the work, table of worship. The second table, love your neighbor, the table of friendship. Can you do that? The third table, love one another, the table of fellowship. Can you do that? All of these tables are part of our discipleship. Our discipleship in Christ and our discipleship of one another as well. These three tables are key. John 20 then goes on and it says, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. I'm going all the way to the end of it. You read the beginning? Here's the end of it. But these, these are written so that you may believe Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. In his name. These things are written that you might have life. Amen? John 1.14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We observed his glory, the glory as the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. God became flesh and dwelt among us. How's your tabernacled life? Are the three tables present regularly? Because we are after a divine, and he's doing it. He works in us. Divine transformation of the personal and that that divine transformation happens fully present within a community. The end of this verse wraps up what we've been talking about. Jesus is the glory of God. He is God himself. Reminds us that he came from the Father. As John 16 tells us, he was sent here so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Amen? Can we stand? Lord, I thank you for this household of faith. Thank you that you are working in us. Lord, none of us on our own could hold this ship steady. <laughs> you are the head of this church. We thank you that you are Lord, you are our Savior, you are Creator, you are our Redeemer, you and you alone. Lord, you are our chief apostle. You sent us. So, Lord, will you give us, will you light us up with imagination, Lord, for these three tables? I pray that every person here would be lit up in their imagination, even with faces and names of people that they can gather with around these three tables. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for this day. For you have made it. We love you, Lord. Be with us this week. I pray a blessing on everybody within the sound of my voice. Lord, bring them peace, hope, and life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Bless you, church.